Nelson's back in our hands. We spoke earlier, didn't we? About Vault 22? My offer still stands, if you've changed your mind. Good. No need to check in with the NCR authorities. I can authorize your payment from OSI accounts. Vaults typically contain a server room on a lower level, where they would have backed up their research data. A computer room, you understand? Download all the information on the central server to your Pip-Boy. And you'll be certain to bring me any notes or samples that you find, won't you? I thought it was a fairly straightforward assignment. It's a simple question of retrieving the data, which shouldn't prove overly challenging. Downloading the data will be handled by your Pip-Boy. You might think of yourself as a mere means of conveyance. No insult intended, of course. Best of luck to you. Not that you'll need it. You seem like a reasonably competent person. Did Dr. Hildern... This really isn't any of my business, but... Did he give you a job? I shouldn't say anything. I know that. But you're not the first person Hildern sent out to the vault. There were a lot of mercs. One after another. None of them came back. Then, about a week ago, there was a scientist, Keeley. She's unusual. Not the sort of person you'd expect. But she's an absolute genius, and... And he didn't mention her? Not even her name? Or any of the other mercs? No, wait. I don't mean to see any harm come to Dr. Hildern. Unless by talk, you just mean talk. Listen, I make a fair wage, but I'm not rich. Not by any means. Maybe my kind of money wouldn't appeal to your average merc. But I'm willing to pay you if you'll find Keeley and make sure she's safe. In right leaving her out there. No idea if she's alive or dead. I had a good feeling about you. Moment you walked in. I mean it. Of course. Anything. Keeley's brilliant. An absolute genius. She plays at being mean, but it's all a front. When you've lived as long as she has, you get defensive around new people. Who wants to make a friend when you know you'll outlive them? I couldn't get her to say, but she talked about the war. The Great War, when the bombs fell, like she'd been there. So, I'm guessing pretty old. Two hundred years? Maybe more. Like a Brahmin and a Deathclaw, though I'm not sure which would be which. Bad analogy, maybe. They're both Deathclaws in their way. Keeley hates Hildern. She says he's more politician than scientist, and gets in the way of true discovery. And Hildern hates Keeley because... Well, because every time they meet, she makes him look like an ass. In front of important people, usually. Head researcher. Mostly on the damn project, but I help out on other things when they need me. Gotta be flexible. The director? He's... very well-spoken and... knowledgeable. He's not what you'd call warm, unless he wants something from you. And even then, it's kind of a cold warm. Most of the time, I focus on the science and try to forget him. He doesn't get mixed up in any actual work, though he tells people that he does. He sure does. Everyone knows it. I've just got to endure this job until the project is finished. But abandoning Keeley? He crossed a line. Taking credit for other people's work is one thing. Sending people to die in the waste is another. If Hildren tries to recruit any more mercs, I'm gonna warn them. What can he do to me? I'm the only one who can run this lab. My father used to say good things about them, but that was years ago. Back when they teach farmers and ranchers about crop rotation and the like. Nowadays, they've changed. They're doing what they can to discredit the NCR. Give us a bad name with the locals. Dr. Hildren trained with them years ago. Not me, though. I'm an OSI girl. It's foul to tell the truth. 
Most people try to get what they can from the outside, even if it's just a smuggled candy bar now and then. Contreras is a genius. He can find almost anything you'd want. Takes caps to get him motivated, though. He won't do a thing for free. Right. Stay safe. I'd remember if I had seen you here before. I'm sure of it. What do you want? The clamor of our bloodthirsty crowds reaches every corner of the wasteland. But I'll pretend that your ignorance doesn't offend me, stranger. This is the Thorn. Here's where the strong make a name for themselves. And the weak are fed to the jaws of hell. You can bet on the contenders. Or, if you have what it takes, be one of the contenders. Be warned. The Thorn demands respect. Break the rules, or offend me in any way, and I'll gut you open for all to see. What do you want to know? The rules are simple. My creatures fight for our pleasure. You can bet on a contender, and earn double if you choose the victor. But you can get a bigger share if you risk your skin in the Thorn. Win a fight, and I'll give you a meaty cut of the earnings. I won't tolerate anyone that interferes with the fights. Offend me, and your blood will be the next to spill. Other than that, anything goes. We've got a pair of giant mantises ready to bleed. I'm listening. Ask, and you might get an answer. New Vegas has many faces, stranger. Despite everything, it shall never be whole. When the land hunts you, when fighting for survival is the norm, your neighbors become either saviors or enemies. Westside is a part of New Vegas, just as much as it's a part of the wasteland. In the end, stranger, we need them both to continue making our fate. Westside attracts all sorts of travelers, including merchants and farmers. They come here to exchange their goods, or to seek protection. Our community provides enough food, clothes, weapons, and medicine to encourage trade and to arm our defenses. The Thorn demonstrates, beyond anything else, that we're self-sufficient. Our desert blood has overcome even the strongest beasts of the wasteland. I'm listening. My creatures are expensive to find, expensive to raise, and expensive to maintain. If your pleasure is to see them bleed at your will, I'll oblige only after my costs are covered, stranger. Those costs will change depending on your choice of fighters. Also, I'll only allow fair fights in the Thorn. I'll help you set up good matches. You pay, you bet, and I bring you the most delightful spectacle on this world. Are we clear? I'm listening. What's on your mind? The Thorn is my master, not the other way around. I live to make our kin able to transcend their limitations. Our land is harsh and hostile. Our lives are cheap and fragile. Death is our assured fate, striking when least we expect it. The Thorn awakens us to the truth. 
Here we escape from our bonds and choose the moment of death against the will of destiny. The land does not care about petty squabbles among lesser men. I don't care about that either. In the end, the people of New Vegas will continue to live and die here. It matters not who their self-appointed master is. Bold, as it pleases the Thorn and me. But it does take more than that to earn my admiration. You speak like a hunter. Yet only actions prove one's worth. The thorn requires a tribute of blood, and so do I. I'm listening. Even if I trusted you, I'd not share my secrets just for your pretty face, stranger. The thorn's a sacred ground, a source of awe. Here we truly rule over the forces of nature, for once. These beasts are slaves to their instincts and hunger for blood. That's a good enough answer for everyone, and it'll do for you, too. Our creatures come from the farthest reaches of the wasteland. The thorn takes care of them, until the time to spill their blood comes. We constantly replenish our stock to keep this holy ground soaked red. Only a few brave ones ever earn the honor of serving the Thorn. Think you have what it takes? Hmm. All right. Prove your worth, and I'll reward your service. The Thorn needs newborn specimens that will one day grow to honor us with their blood. Bring me a dozen giant mantises' eggs. If you accomplish this, I might gift you with greater tasks in the future. You'll find egg-carrying mantises in the wasteland. But a wise hunter would search the mantises' breeding ground, like the nearby ruins of Vault 22. You've got yourself a deal. So long, stranger.